One of the most common things I hear about today, particularly from organizations who are early cloud adopters, is when they want to migrate workloads that were developed on one cloud provider's infrastructure to another, but they say they can't do it. The fact is, is nothing is technically impossible. It's just a matter of the costs outweighing the benefits. Whether they want to migrate for security, compliance, to lower costs, or any other reason, if the costs outweigh the benefits, it probably won't happen. That's why, when it comes to hybrid cloud strategy, more and more IT decision makers are now demanding the following two key factors. Firstly, flexibility. You might want to run or move a workload anywhere, in a public cloud, a private data center, or with a new outsourcer, because the platform that seems best today may not be the best one in two years' time, maybe not even in two months' time. You want choice without harsh financial penalties for changing course. Secondly, commonality. You also want a consistent management and QA experience, no matter where you deploy. A hybrid cloud architect values as few variables in the architecture as possible. More variation means more costs when automating at scale. And if you need to distribute service stacks globally, the cost of rebuilding it all on various infrastructures can cost millions. But actually, from a technical perspective, migrating the app and the data is just the easy part. It's the management infrastructure that's far trickier. Management dependencies are massive. It's like a game of Jenga. Take one piece away and the whole service stack can come tumbling down and rebuilding that stack can be daunting. That's why we want to draw your attention to pure public cloud vendors releasing plugins that might be mistaken for hybrid cloud management. Let's take the AWS management portal as an example. Administrators might find it useful for conducting basic management tasks from VMware vCenter, like importing a simple VM to AWS. After all, when your skills, policies and trust lie with your established VMware infrastructure, it's understandable you still want to control things from there. However, as noted, the virtual machine is just the easy part. Don't accept the thinking that this is now hybrid cloud. Do consider all of the management dependencies as well as the third party integration. Let's say you later want to move these workloads or simply run additional instances in a region with no AWS presence or with an outsourcer, another cloud provider or your own data center. You may find that the cost and complexity of migrating or making a new deployment is just too much. The service stack would likely be bound to proprietary APIs and all or most of the third party management and operational software will have to be replaced. You'll have the burden of new QA challenges and you may need to re-engage with procurement teams. There are many things that the AWS management portal does not do and these gaps would lead you to question its strategic value for a hybrid cloud strategy. Consider the following for example. There's no easy way to move workloads back to one of your data centers or to another cloud provider. You can't use your existing software licenses. You have no assured compatibility of any vSphere supported operating system and certified applications. You cannot automate and orchestrate across private and public clouds. You cannot enforce policy governance across multiple clouds. And you lose all of the seamless third party integrations deployed through the VMware Solution Exchange. So whether you're strategically aligned to VMware or not, you should demand consistent management, third party integration, and a common API that spans all hybrid cloud scenarios. Don't be fooled by basic management that's tactically useful today, but can lead to an increased lock-in later. Your cloud service broker has to be multi-provider. vCloud Automation Center is today and has been for some time. Your hybrid cloud platform should enable provider choice and seamless third-party integration, regardless of where a workload is deployed. And running it elsewhere should not mean a massive migration effort and huge costs. Choosing a tool to meet today's immediate needs can mean more problems down the road. And if you've been in IT long enough, you'll have seen how a tactical band-aid can end up being the permanent solution. More than ever in the cloud era, you must think strategically about management. Proprietary service provider tools are creating modern silos. They drive up the total cost of ownership and they increase provider lock-in. There is a better way. Our approach means a standard supported by thousands of cloud providers, outsourcers, partners, end user organizations and ecosystem vendors worldwide. In addition, our OpenStack support means that you can choose how to integrate and manage services 
and, critically, can change course any time. What seems sensible today can cost you dearly tomorrow. As the great Yoda once said, always in motion is the future. Management tools that take away your ability to choose limit that future. Agility demands are ever increasing, and our bet is that a future with limited choice is a future with insufficient agility. So in summary, do reflect on your hybrid cloud management strategy. Choose your platform with a full understanding of what capabilities and limitations it brings. How will you define your organization's hybrid cloud future?